Blueprint interfaces are an essential concept in Unreal Engine that will make your life a whole lot easier. And in this video, we're going to look at when and how to use them. So I've taken the starter content and I've made a very basic interaction system that piggybacks off of Blueprint interfaces for the sake of demonstrating in this video. So here we have a door, if we walk up to it and we press F, it'll open and we can also close it. We have a chair that we can take a seat in, again by pressing F, and if I press F again, we'll get up. Then we have a switch that toggles a lamp. And a switch that can start and stop a moving platform. And finally, we can pick up the first person gun by walking up to it and pressing F. So, the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, what do these things have in common? Well, besides being interactable, they really don't have anything in common. And that's usually when you'll find that blueprint interfaces are a good fit for doing something. They share one piece of functionality, which is that they can all be interacted with. But other than that, they're pretty vast and different. So enough talking. Let's just jump in and demonstrate why that's important, why a blueprint interface is great for this, and how to set them up. So real quick, we're going to take a look at the first person character. Now, what I have set up here is just a basic line trace. You don't have to worry too much about what's going on here. All that's happening is it's when I press F, a line's going to get drawn from the camera 500 units straight forward. So whatever direction I'm looking in, we'll draw a line. It'll hit something and then it'll give us data about whatever it hit. Now, if you saw my video on casting or if you know about casting in general, you'll know that in order to access any of the events, functions or variables inside of a given object in the world, you'll need a direct reference. So in this case, if we were trying to make an interaction system via casting, we would have to take this hit actor and for example, say cast to BP underscore door. And then assuming the door had a built in interact event, we could then come off of here and go on interact. I didn't actually put a built in interact event into the door and you'll see why in a second. But the problem with this is we also have a chair, right? So the only way to really go about adding our chair to this interaction code is we'd have to come off of cast failed and then we'd have to go cast to BP underscore chair and then we'd have to call its interact function if it succeeded and then now we added in a switch so we have to come off of this and cast to BP underscore or a button rather. And this is, this is just bad. First of all, this is really badly unoptimized. Casts are actually expensive because they create what's known as a hard reference, meaning they're always loaded. And also, if you think about it, if you go up to the button, it has to first check all these other casts before it gets to the button. And but besides those, those aren't even my biggest problems with this. The biggest problem is that anytime you want to add a new interactable object, you got to come into here. You got to go to your humongous nest of casts and you got to add in the new object. And that's just not modular. It's not scalable. It's not practical. So to get around doing this, we're going to use a blueprint interface. So I'm just going to delete these and we're going to hop out of here for a minute and go into the content browser. I'm just going to go into the folder I made and to create a blueprint interface. What you do is you right click, go to blueprints and blueprint interface. Now I'm going to name this BPI underscore interactable. And then we're going to double click to open this. Now, I feel like this is where people who are new to blueprint interfaces get confused. This is just a read only graph. It really doesn't serve any purpose other than to show you what your events and functions look like. You can't add anything in here. And that's actually kind of the point of blueprint interfaces, as we'll see. All a blueprint interface is, is a list of declared functions and events. We take our blueprint interfaces, we put it on a class, and it will now have those events. Then we define the functionality for those events in the class for which this interface is on. If that's confusing, don't worry, we're going to do it right now. So we start off with this new function. I'm going to rename this on interact. And you can see that we can add inputs and outputs just like we can with events and functions in any other class. Real quick, I'm going to add an input. I'm going to call it interacting player. And we're just going to make this a generic character object reference. That way we can get a reference to the interacting player in the blueprints that we're interacting with. And that's actually really useful as we'll see in a minute. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm also going to create another function and I'm going to call it is interactable. And this time we're going to give it an output. It's going to be a Boolean and we're going to name the Boolean interactable. 
So one thing real quick to note about interfaces is anytime you declare a function and it doesn't have an output, it's going to show up as an event, as you'll see in a minute. And anytime you do have an output, it's going to show up as a function, which should make sense because events don't have return nodes and functions do. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go see how to use this. So in my first person map, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my door BP. Now, I have the code already in here that allows the door to function as a door without the interacting aspect of it. We're not going to get too deep into this because this isn't a tutorial about doors. It's a tutorial about interfaces and interaction. This project file will be available for download at the link in the description. So if you want to dig into this stuff more, you can feel free to download it and check it out. Anyways, now we're going to add that interact interface to this door. And to do so, what you're going to do is you're going to click on class settings. And then you'll see interfaces over here. And you have this drop down to add. We'll go in here and we'll type in BPI underscore interactable. And if we compile, make sure you also compile your interface or you won't see any change. Now, if you look on the left hand side in our My Blueprint panel, we have is interactable and on interact. Now, if I right click on interact, I can implement this event. And you'll see we get this on interact event. And it's also outputting an interacting player, which I set up this door so that it'll always open away from the player. And in order to do that, we're going to need a reference to our player. So I'll just plug this in here. Now you might be thinking, why is this useful? Well, I'm going to show you the magic right now. In the first person character, you might be thinking, okay, great. I still have to cast to my door in order to access that interaction event. But actually, you don't. If you drag off this generic hit actor and you type in on interact, you'll get that interact interface call. And then for interacting player, we can pass in self. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now you can just take that interface, put it on any item that's interactable, define its functionality inside of it, and you never have to touch any of this code. There's no need for nested casts, none of that. This is done. The only time you would have to edit this is if you wanted to add new features entirely to the interact system itself. So like if you wanted to have a prompt on screen that, you know, says press F to interact with object, then you might need to add some stuff here, which would also involve adding new events and whatnot to your interface. But I'm getting a little off topic. The point is this will work and it will work for any, any object that we put the interface on. And you might be thinking, well, what if the hit actor that comes through here doesn't have an interface? And the answer is nothing. It just won't do anything. You can, if you need to check, you can go in and you can do does implement interface, which will, and you have to select this class drop down, go BPI underscore interactable. And now you have this Boolean where you can branch and you can check if a given object implements an interface, put that right here if we want. It won't make any difference. It won't make any difference in this case, but there are times where you might just want to know in general if something has an interface and this could be useful. Now, remember, we also had that other interface function, the is interactable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this for now. And I'm going to call that is interactable function. And you can see that we now have access to that output. So if I go here, I go branch and this could be useful if, for example, you wanted to make something not interactable after you're done interacting with it. When you think about like maybe some of the doors in God of War, you can walk up to them, open them and they stay open and you don't have to interact with them again. Something like that. And we'll plug that in there. So now if we go back to our door and we click on this is interactable function, you'll see we have this interactable variable right here. We'll set it to true. And if I compile hit play, walk up to the door and press F, it works. And if we go to the other side of the door, like I said, it will open away from the player. Now all of these objects follow the exact same principle. If we look at the rifle, for example, all I've done is taken the code that's included by default in the first person template. And instead of using an on component begin overlap with a sphere collision, I've just made it so that we use this on interact event from the interface so that we can pick it up by pressing F. But now I want to focus our attention onto these buttons here because these buttons are making use of two interfaces. So 
applied directly to them, we have the BPI underscore interactable interface, but we're also going to make use of a second interface so that we can control whatever we want with a button without having to change the button's code. So we're inside the button now, and as you can see, it has the interact interface, and I've deconstructed the rest of the functionality so that we could put it back together right now. But basically, this button might control anything. So as I showed before, one of these buttons controls a lamp, and then the other one controls a moving platform, which are two very distinct things. So what I did was I exposed a generic actor to the details panel. That way we could just drag a button into the world and select any given actor. So in this case, so in this case, we'll select the light. And now we need to make it turn the light on and off. Now, yes, of course, like always, if I wanted to, I could cast to the lamp. But the problem is then it's not going to work for the platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another interface. I'm going to go here, blueprint interfaces, and we're going to call this BPI underscore electricity. And for the sake of this video, all I'm going to do is add one event and we're going to call it uh, on activate. Okay. And we'll compile. And now this interface will go on any object that we want a button to control. So we'll go into the lamp and all I have here is the lamp static mesh from the starter content and a point light. And I have the code here to basically just turn this point light on and off in order to run this code. What we're going to do is go to class settings. We're going to add that BPI underscore electricity interface. And then you'll see we have that event on activate. We'll implement it plug it in like so, and then back in the button, we will run that on activate event from the electricity interface. And that's it. Now we can drag a button into the world. We can select any object that we wanted to control. Just slap that electricity interface onto that object. We don't have to change any code in the button and it will work. And also real quick, I forgot we have to check this is interactable checkbox. But now if I compile, hit play, walk up to this button, you'll see that it toggles the light. And it's the exact same thing for the platform. If I go into the platform, add that BPI underscore electricity interface, implement that event. You can see I have all the code here already to make the platform start and stop. Again, not important for this tutorial. We're just going to plug this event activate right here. And then if I take this button, I already have the platform selected. I hit play. And it makes the platform move. Now to drive all of this home, I'm just going to create a brand new interactable object from scratch. It's going to be really simple. It's just going to print out a name when we walk up to it and press F. So in my blueprints folder, I'm going to create a new blueprint class. We're going to make it an actor and I'm going to call it BP underscore cube guy. All right, we're going to open that up and real quick, just for aesthetics, I'm going to add some components. Okay. And we're going to give it a string variable called name, or actually we'll call it first name. And we'll expose it to the details panel so we can set it in the world. And then what we want to do is we want to print out this name when we walk up and press F. So I'm going to go to class settings, add BPI underscore interactable. We're going to go into the function and make it interactable. And then we're just going to implement the on interact event. We're going to take first name and we're going to print string. All right, we'll drag this in. make its first name Brian. And now when I hit play, walk up to the cube guy, press F, you'll see it prints out Brian. And it was that simple to add a brand new interactable object. All right. And that's all there is to this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please slap a like on it and consider subscribing for future videos from me. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And yeah, I wish you all the best of luck with your projects.